is it going? That's it. That is the end. I'll adjust the mic quickly here. But that's the end of today's Premier League fixtures. And just going over the results quickly. I've just got them in front of me just to recap because it's been a long day of football. Okay, you got Aston Villa who beat Arsenal 1-0 at Villa Park. And that is a big result for Aston Villa because they, their challenge for European football continues and carries on. And now they sit in 8th position on after 21 games on 35 points. So it means they're very much in the running. Very much capable for Aston Villa. Arsenal, they tried to come forward in the last stages of the game. But it just felt like they lacked fight going forwards. And now they, they have two losses on the banks. Obviously, the Wolves one is a bit unfortunate because of some ref for fraudulence but that means they're two losses on the banks now and that hype and that form that they were finding is just gone a little bit it's it's not quite there and you feel that maybe Champions League is out of their reach now because they sit in 10th place after 23 games Tottenham are one place above them with two games in hand as well say the Hampton are in 12th with a game in hand Leeds are a place behind them with two games in hand and just two points behind so it's it's, it's quite ropey for Arsenal so it doesn't look like they're going to get into the Euro European places, it looks like you know they're gonna have to fight for some sort of cup competition. Are they in the cups anymore? No, they're at the Carabao, out of the FA. So they have to just back out. I don't back this whole out right shit for me. It is what it is. Aston Villa continue their search for European football. It's almost like they swap places, Arsenal and Aston Villa. Fair play to Villa, credit to them. And then you had Burnley and Brighton. It was a great goal from Brighton. It just looped in. That was it. Lewis Dunk. Again, you know, it's it's one of those where they're both in a relegation place, they're both in a relegation battle. It's all it's all getting tasty down there. Newcastle and Southampton was a very interesting game because in the first half, Newcastle United were outstanding. Joe Willock got his first goal in the Newcastle colours. That war price free kick, he's just he's just fantastic and he's so, so good. The best free kick taker in the Premier League and I can't see anyone who's challenging him. He's so consistent. They're consistently on target. He's so, so good. Almiron with the two goals and the guy who doesn't usually crop up with the goals for Newcastle has produced the goods and ultimately is what's won them the game. But Takumi Minamino, obviously on loan from my club, Liverpool, is it's great to see him getting a goal. Great goal from him. And it's, it's great to see from the lads. Obviously, as a Liverpool supporter, you want to see the players who go out on loan perform well. You know, I don't wish any ill will towards him. I don't I don't wish that he doesn't do well for Southampton. You know, it's great to see him get on the score sheet and produce the goods. Hopefully, he could do that for the rest of the season. Come back to Liverpool and prove his worth to Jurgen Klopp. Fulham and West Ham, 0-0. It stunts West Ham's progression a little bit, to be honest with you. Fifth in fifth position obviously they hold the Europa League spot at the moment bit of a hindrance for them and you know Fulham at home are very very good they're aggressive and they go after you they've shown that against Liverpool and when they had the crowd in there as well and it's a shame that the, 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 the crowd's not there in Craven Cottage because it seemed to spur them on it's a very tight knit stadium it's one of those you know with that old school atmosphere everything's blocked in it was like Highbury in its day the crowd's up for it the team's boosted by their performances but it just seems like a Fulham at home is a very dangerous Fulham and West Ham found out it today they couldn't take advantage of it you have a chasing Everton who are behind them now with two games in hand just two points behind you have Chelsea who are who are still there in amongst the European places or contention for it anyway so West Ham need to be careful if they're going to challenge for the European places then we get on to the main course Manchester United and Everton 3 all. and I don't think it was a bad performance from Manchester United at all the Cavani goal which was poor from Everton it was sloppy from Everton to let the ball go over over the top and, and right towards your back post it was it was poor it it flew over Keane's head. I don't think there's much more Keane could have done about it, but the defence in general was poor for that goal. And then you had Bruno Fernandes with, to be fair, you watch that goal, and even as a Liverpool supporter, you know, I'm a football fan at heart, you see those sort of goals, you're like, fair fucking play, fair dues. Everton just backed off, let him get the shot away, and it was a brilliant finish from Fernandes. I can't take anything away from him. But the way that Everton dragged themselves back into the game in the second half was very, very admirable. That, you know, it was sick, to be fair to him. And to Corey with the goal, it was a, it was a cross, it hits the keeper to Corey with the tap in and you think maybe something's on here and Rodriguez three minutes later with a brilliant finish to De Gea's left and he can't quite get there but McTominay puts the dagger in Everton's heart or what we thought it was anyway from a free kick into a header Olsen kind of fucks up a little bit to be honest with you you know it's down low to his left he can't quite get there somehow and it just trickles in you think oh for fuck's sake Manchester United have gotten away with one again again they pick up three points when it didn't look like they were going to and you know as much as I don't like to see it you have to give credit to teams who do that that is what champions or championship contenders do and that is fighting somehow pick the three points away but right at 
the death in the 90th plus fifth minute. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, and you'll see my celebration. I'll insert it in at the start of this video. Brilliant from Dominic to get in there, to just put his foot in there. Maguire plays him on. Brilliant from Everton. It's great stuff, and that actually keeps their European hopes alive. Obviously, as I've said multiple times, two games in hand over West Ham, 37 points. If they win those two games in hand over everybody, if my math is correct here, 43 points, which would put them in third position. So Everton are very much in with the dark horse outside shape of things. So, you know, we need to keep an eye on them. Obviously, their, their form will need to be top-notch from here to the end of the season to make a title challenge. But a top four challenge? Definitely on. 100% on. Of course, it's on for Everton. So it's interesting to just see where this league goes now. This this crazy season where everything's just batshit and there's no certainties. There's no certain result. Because I would have said the Manchester United would have won this game going into it because of the, just the knack that they have for winning these games. And they almost did. And somehow Everton pulled it back. So credit to Everton. West Ham United's growth is stunted a little after today's results. Aston Villa still in with a shave, still very much in with a shave. They, they win their two games in hand. They'll be on 41 points, which would put them in fourth position. So, again, it's all to play for. Liverpool versus Manchester City tomorrow. You know, the powerhouse game of the Premier League for the past three seasons. But, obviously, there's less consequences for, for Liverpool, really. Well, there's not less, but it's not a title decider, as it has been for the past couple of seasons. It'll be, you know, Liverpool trying to, uh, trying to get this season back on track to be honest but Manchester City is so good it'll be, it'll be a tough challenge but obviously back the Reds get in there you know best hopefully the best team wins on the day but hopefully that's the Reds so yeah that's the Premier League wrap up for tonight's games Dominic Calvert-Lewin build a statue for the man what a legend anyway I will see you tomorrow 100% because it's City and Liverpool ta -ra.